Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. Part 32, true based ensemble methods. For the following episodes, I assume that either you have a good understanding of decision trees and you know how do they work, or you have watched my previous videos, uh, namely part 28 to 31. In either case, knowing the basics of decision trees is what we need to understand tree-based ensemble methods. If you remember, when we talked about decision trees, we, we specifically said that they have lots of advantages, right? Namely, they can easily handle categorical data and they can capture nonlinear pattern in the data. And most importantly, they can handle data in its raw form. There is no need to do pre-processing, right? Also, the, these, are, these decision trees are non-parametric models. So it means that we are not assuming uh, any functional form or we are not imposing any distribution to the data. Okay, so these are, these are all the advantages of decision trees. But on the other hand, one of the main disadvantages of decision trees are that they are, um, they are not that powerful in terms of accuracy. So the poor level of predictive accuracy is something that makes us wonder how can we improve that, right? And that's where the idea of ensemble methods come. Uh, the idea is very simple. We, we say that, okay, why working with a single tree? So instead of working with one tree, why not take advantage of wisdom of the crowd, right? So let's combine multiple weak learners. Let's combine multiple decision trees and make a consensus prediction based on that. Later on, we're gonna see that mathematically, if you do that, the variance of the model is going to reduce, okay? So uh, to sum it up, the idea is, let's say we have multiple trees, okay? And at the end of the day, we are gonna aggregate the performance over all the trees. So for example, if you're talking about regression, so each tree is going to give us one prediction, right? So let's call it F hat tree number one, F hat tree number two, and et cetera. F hat tree number B. B is the number of bootstrap, right? So let's say we have we are uh, we are making a forest of these trees with uh, with thousands of forests. So capital letter B is going to be thousand, right? So if it is regression, we have it, uh, uh, let's say average number, uh, average prediction for each tree. So we're going to take the average of all of them. We call this our final prediction. If it is classification, it's also uh, straightforward. You're going to look at the majority votes, right? So for example, tree number one is going to say, okay, at, at each branch we have, you no, know, let's say default or no default. Tree number two says default. Tree number three says no default. At the end of the day, we're going to uh, look at the majority vote, and that's going to be the prediction of the model. Okay. So that's the idea of tree-based ensemble methods. And now with that, let's um, look into the details. All right. So in terms of where we are, uh, we know that tree-based models are used for both regression and classification. These are supervised machine learning algorithm. And actually these are the last set of uh, supervised models that we're going to explore in this series of lectures, right? So tree-based models are uh, basically, we started with uh, simple decision trees. We covered them in the previous episode. And in this one, we're going to talk about bagging and random forest. Basically these are ensemble version of the decision trees. The idea, as I said earlier, we are going to combine multiple weak learners to come up with a strong uh, learner, right? And then the, in next series of uh, in next lectures, we're, I'm going to talk about boosting. Okay, so decision tree, bagging, random forest, boosting. These are all the models that based on the simple decision tree and expansion to those okay. simple trees. We are going to talk about the ensemble methods in, in three parts. In this episode, part 32, I'll be talking about uh, what is the motivation, why we should use ensemble methods, and what is the mathematics behind it. In the part 33, we're going to cover uh, bootstrap aggregation or bagging, and we're going to compare it with random forests. We talk about the hyperparameters and feature importance. And finally, in part 34, we will be talking about pros and cons and also its applications in finance. Why not a simple tree? So remember, the goal is to reduce the bias and variance at the same time, right? And uh, the idea is that can we push the total error down even further? 
So from our last class, if you remember, we talked about decision trees. We said that, okay, let's start with the very bushy tree. So it was our initial tree. Let's call it decision tree one. Start with a very bushy tree because the bias is going to be small, but unfortunately, this very bushy tree is going to uh, overfit, right, in, in, uh, in the train set, and then it's going to perform very poorly in the test set because it, it is overfitting. We said, okay, what's the solution? The solution is that let's, what if we prune it back? We start with a very bushy tree and then we prune it back. So maybe the optimal, we get to the optimal, the trade off between. Uh, between bias and variance. The hope is that uh, by pruning, by cutting out some branches, the bias is going to increase a little bit. You know, if you look at the bias, the bias is going to increase a little bit, but on the other hand, the variance is going to decrease a lot. And the hope is that eventually we get to the optimal value for the, the uh, number of terminal nodes in the, in the model, right? So remember the model complexity in decision trees are the number of uh, terminal nodes. We can think of number of terminal nodes as a model compl complexity. Yeah, so let's call it decision tree optimized, right? So th this was the idea of decision trees, right? So we started with the bushy tree, we prune it back to opt uh, to get a better uh, output outcomes. But the, what is the idea of bagging and random forest in general? So the, the, in bagging, the focus is on reducing the variance part, right? So we are going to say that is there a way that we can let me just erase this extra stuff. Is there a way that we can push this variance curve, the entire variance curve down? This this is the idea of random forest, right? Or, or bagging in general. And uh, so if we can do that, so if you so we say that bagging focuses on on reducing the variance, the model variance, right? By doing that, we will be able to reduce the entire um, error. If it is class uh, error in the test set, right? If it is classification, uh, if we, let's say we, we want to increase the accuracy or reduce the error rate. If it is regression, we want to reduce the uh, mean squared error or RSS. Okay. So that's that's the idea of bagging, and we're going to look at the mechanism of uh, how bagging is able to do that. And uh, for boosting, however, the goal is to reduce the bias. So in boosting, we will start with a very small tree. Actually, we're going to combine lots of small trees together. And the idea is that uh, the variance is already small, and let's see if we can reduce this bias, the entire curve of the bias for different complexity of the model, right? And with that, we want, we want to reduce the error as well. So I want you to pay attention that the focus of bagging and boosting is different. In bagging, we reduce the model variance. In boosting, the algorithm is trying to reduce the model bias. Right? But overall, both of them are going to outperform decision trees by, by, by a large margin. OK. Now let's talk about ensemble learning. Um, so. When we say ensemble learning, uh, the idea is that why not use predictions of a group uh, or ensemble of models, right? Ensemble learning means that we are combining the predictions from a collection of models, right? And um, as we discussed it earlier, the idea of trying to learn, uh, well, the idea is that instead of trying to learn one super accurate model, let's focus on training many low accuracy models and then combined predictions given by those weak models, right? So we know that, for example, in, in random forest and bagging, we know that we can come, we can start with a simple decision tree, right? This simple decision tree, we call it the weak learner because we know that the accuracy is not that high. So the idea is that let's let's resample from the from the data and make lots of trees out of this one simple data set, right? So we come up with different predictions and then let's combine all these predictions together. So this is this is the idea and call it strong learner, right? And um, it, it happens because of the statistical property when you look at the variance of the, the uh, let's say combined estimator, uh, the variance is going to be smaller, right? Um, the, for example, the variance of the sample average is, so we all know that the variance of x bar, if, if x, uh, x bar is the sample average, is going to be, depends on sigma divided by n, right? As the number of samples increase, as the number of observations in the sample increase, the variance 
uh, of x is going to decrease, x bar is going to decrease, right? The same story here is true here for our machine learning algorithm. So in machine learning algorithm, we are focusing on the variance of f hat of x, right? At the end of the day, we want to estimate this, uh, this functional form, this f hat of x, right? And then we know that it's going to be a combination of bunch of f hat. Let's say this is tree number one plus f hat tree number two plus f hat tree number three and etc. Right. And we know that we have B, well let's say we have capital B of these trees, right? So the variance is going to be uh, the variance of tree number one plus variance of tree number two plus uh, the covariance between the trees, right? The covariance between, let's say, tree one and tree two, and et cetera. And in the denominator, we have capital letter B, right? So we see that the variance of the ensemble methods depends on the variance of the individual methods and the covariance between them, right? So this is key, right? And so, so we, the idea is that can we reduce the individual variances by a lot, and then when it's divided by B, the overall variance of the ensemble method is going to be smaller than the variance of the single single tree. Okay, so so that's the big picture. Okay, and so ensemble learnings uh, typically produce more accurate and more stable predictions than the best single model, right? And ensemble learning methods are based on two, in general, based on two, two groups, right? Uh, two, two methods. The first one is based on aggregation of the heterogeneous learners. And the second one is based on aggregation of homogeneous learners. So what do we mean by heterogeneous and homogeneous learners? So heterogeneous learners means that we're talking, we're dealing with different models, right? So the models are different from each other. They're heterogeneous. So we can have SVM, we can have decision tree, we can have uh, I don't know, KNN, you name it, whatever model that we have covered so far in the class, right? Or any other machine learning models. So the idea is that, that let's work with the uh, same data set, but apply different models and then aggregate the predictions. If it is classification, look at the uh, majority class uh, vote, right? If it is prediction, let's take, if it is regression, let's take the average. So that's the idea of uh, heterogeneous learners. For homogeneous learners, however, uh, the model is unique. We have one model, right? So let's say we only, or the weak learners are only decision trees, but we will work with different variations of the same data set, right? So we're gonna resample from the data set thousands of times, and then we will be end up with thousands of predictions for, uh, um, for, for the data, right? And then we're gonna aggregate over those predictions if it is classification or regression, right? So um, for the heterogeneous learners, we will end up with voting classifiers or average predictions. For homogeneous learners, we will do either bagging or boosting, right? And both, of, both of them have involved the idea of bootstrapping from the same data set thousands of times. Okay? And of course, we can have a combination of two, right? So let's say we have SVM, we have decision trees, we have we have random forest itself, we have KNN. So if I do something like this, so random forest itself is an aggregation of homogeneous learners, and these are heterogeneous ones. So, if, so it's, a, it's a combination of the, of the model, all right? So this is called combined models. All right. Mm. Okay. Now that we know what is the definition of ensemble methods or ensemble learning, let's let's move on to the definition of bagging versus boosting in a more formal way. So bagging consists of creating many copies of the training data, and each copy is slightly different from the other one, right? So let's say this is my main training set, and I'm generating multiple copies, right? So copy number one, copy number two, copy number three, right? And then I'll apply the weak learner to each copy to obtain multiple weak models and then combine them, right? So let's say I have a decision tree here. I have a decision tree here. I have a decision tree here. And then we'll combine them to get the, the final prediction. Again, if it is classification, majority votes. If it is regression, just simply take the average, right? So this is the definition of bagging. Again, consists of creating many copies of the training data. For boosting, however, it, the boosting consists of using the original training. So basically we will work with our original data set 
and iteratively creating multiple models by using a weak learner, right? So, so the idea is booting, boosting is very neat. So it says that, okay, take the original data and then apply a weak learner to that decision tree, let's say. Whatever is explained, let's pass it to the final output. Whatever is unexplained, or let's call it residuals, it will be passed to the second step, right? So the residuals are going to go down this path. And the second, so the idea is that this data is going to be the, the, the unexplained part of the original data set, right? We're going to use another weak learner on, 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 on those errors, and we want to fix them. Whatever part is fixed, we pass it to the outputs. Whatever is not fixed, we pass it uh, to the new data set. Again, uh, the new data set is going to be the residual of the previous step, right? And then finally, we are going to repeat this process sequentially until there's a stopping criteria or we are satisfied with the outputs, right? And all of these things are going to contribute to the final output. The output is the prediction, right? So that, that's the idea of boosting. So these, uh, boosting and bagging are different in this way. Thank you.